This is the BBC, with the Daily Minutes podcast. Oh no it isn't. I mean this is the Daily Minutes podcast. This is however not the BBC. Daily Minutes, 29 January 2023. This is a bulletin for Sunday. Digital modes. The first digital voice mode that became hugely successful amongst radio amateurs was D-Star. Before that, amateurs have been active on digital modes, but it was only experimental or not broadly embraced. In the US, as very limited in Germany, there was some activity in APCO P25, the American police system. D-Star came at a good moment. There hadn't been huge technical changes for at least 15 or 20 years, so curiosity was large for the new mode that appeared. In addition to that, in many countries even novice got access to the shortwave bands, which sort of diminished the huge activity on VHF and UHF that had characterized the era from the 70s until a few years before. The internet working that has almost every repeater for D-Star on the same reflector guaranteed activity. You only had to shout out to have 25 or more repeaters transmitting your call and there was always someone listening. This is much different from the isolated local FM repeaters where you always would meet the same limited crowd of people. So D-Star in part got the activity back on VHF and UHF. D-Star was developed around 2003 by the Japanese amateur radio society JARL. In the Netherlands it was used on a scale of two stations or more since early 2008. In Germany that was a few years earlier. At first there was a lot of criticism. Things like it was an elite mode because the early equipment was so expensive. People also stated that their FM equipment would be worthless very soon and wanted to stop D-Star for that reason, etc. D-Star in fact is open source except for the Amber vocoder that is used. This is a proprietary chip that makes for the compression of the audio signal so that it fits in the low data bandwidth the system uses. The fact of this chip turned into a stumbling block for many of the haters of the system. D-Star couldn't be an amateur system because of this. So much that a few years later when DMR became popular, I heard several users say they were relieved that they didn't have to use D-Star with the proprietary chip it had anymore, not realizing that a newer version of that chip was being used in DMR as well. DMR is also largely open source, but many parts of that open source standard is in fact patented by a large American company. Fact is that at the time D-Star was developed, there was no alternative that was open source for the chip. The reason the Japanese government department of sciences sponsored the development of D-Star with as much as a million dollars was that radio amateurs were terribly late implementing these kind of digital voice techniques. 10 or 15 years behind the professionals. After DMR, Jesus System Fusion also became popular, which in fact really is a quite closed system with all details only known by its manufacturer. It took 12 to 14 years after D-Star getting solid ground in Europe before the first completely open source system became available, which is M17. That system uses the Codec 2 vocoder developed by Australian ham David Rowe, which is also used in the mode Free DV. M17 is the really open digital voice communication system, and it is developed by radio amateurs. With all these systems, one hurdle still has to be taken, which is linking all of these systems together, and preferably also with FM, which on a large scale is a bit complicated, because all traffic in both directions for each channel should be decoded and recoded if it changes system. Most ideal for this would be if the naming for all modes would also be the same. For example, a D-Star reflector would be called a conference server for the Echolink system, a talk group for DMR and a room for system fusion. 
Worldwide, those combining or bridge or interconnecting systems are emerging, and examples for that, for only a few modes, have been in use successfully and with excellent audio quality for a few years now. Title music is by Croatian artist Blasco and is published under Creative Commons. Disclaimer, everything in this podcast, including the accompanying material, as a principle, is basically all fiction, although elements of reality may have been incorporated. For social media, I'm on Mastodon. Just search at P-A-0-E-T-E. Deze uitzending wordt opgedragen aan Jurgen van der Broek, voor altijd de joker van België.